see this look from time to time from the Knights. Third down, St. Clair deep drop back. He's going deep down the field. The pass is caught. Wide open, 40. 30, it's Brock Studwell. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, New York. They're going to hand it off to Ed Shaw. He got the first down. A championship is coming to New York. 23 seconds, 22 seconds. What are they going to do here? Four yards from the end zone. Dunhill going to throw again. Dunhill out to Hollywood. BDG Hollywood touchdown. Oh, my. The Atlanta Swarm. How about it? Your champions, Georgia. 27 to 10 over Sioux Falls. Your Atlanta Swarm are title winners. Uh, to the right. That's Carr. Two down from the end. Hand off. Sandlin. Boy, he almost did go. Almost there got you hit go. the backfield. And Sandlin wow. breaks it through for a touchdown for Seattle. What a run from Sandlin. He was dead to rights in the backfield and made something out of nothing. They're going to go five wide for Wigmore. Wigmore steps up, hit as he threw, passes intercepted at the 50 with room to return. It's Albert begin again. 35 30. Albert begin. 20 10. Touchdown, Lone Star. Ivory Arvin not fast enough this time, and the glory right back in it. Second and 10 from the 38. Marconi back the pass against another blitz. Marconi's going to avoid a sack. Throw a ball deep down the field. The pass is caught. What a throw! What a throw! Touchdown! Minneapolis Tomber on Sabu! Oh my goodness! A slow motion replay here! You've got to be kidding me. SFL is going to bring out the uh, trophy and Minneapolis is going to get to celebrate uh, for the fans that came down. Receivers, three to the right side. Tallahassee needs a stop. They haven't gotten one here in the third. And Cochran's going to the end zone. It's cut for a touchdown. And Alaska has nine points here in the third quarter. That's all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations to the Alaska Storm. They are your season 11 SFL champions. How about EJ DeCue, Patrick Kelly, and Sean Crooked on that line? Great protection for Jackson. Now Moses is running over people, as are the rest of the Scorpions, and they fight him for a touchdown. This Matt Wilson's pass is caught for a touchdown. What a throw to Dijon Swan. The Mexico City Aztecs, headlined by team owner Ramos Lynn, gets their first SFL championship, a 38-24 victory over Chicago. Tonight, Wigmore down 10 of 13, 76 yards, 14th pass of the day. Wigmore fires it outside, it's intercepted! John Barnhart, touchdown! Sioux Falls, he does it again for the Sparrows in the postseason! Showing a blitz on the outside is Queen City. Everyone stays home. Darnell Black runs past everybody. Picks up a block. Darnell Black in the open field. 40, 35, 30. Being chased by Shine. He won't catch him. And the Hyenas have cut it to seven. Mama, there goes that man. Stats all-star crew for a terrific start so far. First and or a third down and nine to start the second wow. quarter. Oh, Ivory Irvin's over the top, and it's a touchdown for Baltimore. Jark Tarkington has a chance to win it. Oh my goodness. For all of that, and Tarkington gives Baltimore their third straight title. Oh my goodness. Well, McChesney gonna get a carry. Oh, there goes McChesney. One man to beat, he breaks it. Jared McChesney down the sideline. Francis trying to catch him. Not today, young fella. Touchdown, Denver, they're right back in it. Down to 15 seconds left. Zuli back to pass. He's going to Corky. It is caught. And he breaks it down. Touchdown, DC. Greg Corky is just. He got to pull out something miraculous here. DC can't let him get behind him. They got to keep everything in front of him here. This is the ball game. Daniel Garcia back to pass. He's going to throw it deep to the middle. The pass is caught. And the tackle is made. Oh. And the DC Dragons have won the championship by a miracle on Zach Zulli's throw to Greg Corky. And I let wow. the fellas give me a breath. 
Week 10 in the SFL is like rounding the final corner and headed for home. The Las Vegas Fury are, well, a game and a half back of division leaders Arizona in the West. And a win could also see them snap a three-season streak where they have finished at 500. Standing in their way is the hometown Charleston Predators. Hello from Fort Moultrie Memorial Stadium here in Charleston, Carolina. I'm Tyler Falk. Alongside me in the booth is Brett Solberg. And Brett, the Fury seem like the overwhelming favorites here in Charleston. The Predators have lost their last seven in a row. You are calling this a trap game. Tell us why. It's very simple to state the facts. Las Vegas has the worst passing defense in the league and the float and the worst overall defense in terms of yards in the league as well, allowing over 400 yards per game. This could lead to a trap for Eric Price and company. It's all about it's all dependent on how Charleston approaches this defensively. Are they going to play ball with this elite offensive squad in Las Vegas who has scored over 35 points per game, or are they gonna get fizzled behind? that flaming fury it all depends on how that defense is going to start but right now it's a trap game tyler i'm excited to see what Char and brett speaking of that defense they're going to have to contend with a resurgent doug Britt, who's having a career year yeah big career year for him we look at we look at his stats throughout his entire career before this one his highest total was just 541 yards back in season 17 now coming into this as the main receiver he's just 84 yards shy of a thousand that'll be his first ever season of a thousand yards in his career so watch out for doug Britton here today all right folks both teams are set to go, and so are we. Welcome to Sunday SFL action. It will be the visitors, the Las Vegas Fury, and their traditional white tops, black bottoms, pink and orange and red accents, picking it off to the all black and red Charleston Predators. Matt Rage has the ball on the tee, and here we go. From the Carolinas, it's SFL. On the turn here for the Preds comes Doug, Bur excuse me, comes Anas Adobe, and he will get all the way up to the 24 yard line before being stopped. And out comes for the Predators, Kentez Johnson, who, despite everything going on, partner for the Predators offense, he has been quite productive or quite efficient in his time here in Charleston over the last three seasons. His QBR numbers have shot up drastically since his time in Houston before he left the league for a couple seasons. We'll talk more about that after this first down play. As he's back to throw, stepping up in the pocket, looking over the middle, that is caught. And an early first down here for Charleston as Kentis Johnson connects with Jay Hayden. Yeah, it's gonna be all dependent on how Kentis Johnson is going to perform. Looking back at his last four full seasons, keep in note, he came back at, se at week six of season 18. His last four seasons combined, we're looking at 128 interceptions. He wants to keep that ball on Charleston's side here today. Now the Preds come out in a power eye formation handoff. Storm and Storm is blasted back to, to last week's Sunday as he goes backwards two yards as we catch up with the rest of you on the rest of that Predator offense. We've talked about Kentis Johnson, the quarterback. Saren Storm is the leading tailback. Behind him is Nick Hoagland as the backup. Terrell Sutherland is the fullback. Jay Hayden, Anas Adobe, and Davies Reed are the wide receivers with Brian Murphy at tight end. And on the line, leading the men in the trenches at center is St. Nebuchadnezzar. Kentis Johnson will take the snap from Nebuchadnezzar and look over the middle again, and it's almost two passes over the middle complete one for each team incomplete pass or at least Lloyd was in the vicinity yeah and that was in the that was in the area of Chris Magel there who's had you know some uh highlight real pick sixes in his career only has one to his name so far this season definitely didn't think we'd be only hearing that amount of interception so far this season from him but almost got one here now Johnson goes alone to the gun he's got trips wide receivers off to his left Back to pass, slants over the middle, it's off the oh. hands of Brian Murphy and taken away by Dave Drury. Back to the 32-yard line of Charleston and Las Vegas will start their first possession in plus territory. 
And we look at the bright side of the Fury defense is going to be the takeaway game. That is the team's 22nd interception this season and Day Drury's third. And now Vegas with immaculate field, pos uh, field position here for their first drive. Single bet set. They will try and stretch it. Left side. Spinning around is the tailback. Scott Johnson, the left-hand side. They also have two tailbacks. That's Scott Johnson. Hubba Kimbrell is the backup tailback. Quarterback is Eric Price. Fullback is Nick Connors. Wide receivers, Doug Britton, Prince Wonder, and Mason Kirby with two tight ends, John Blades and Jackson Roberts. That's your Las Vegas offensive starters. They go back to a single back set. This time, looking to throw over the right-hand side. Great anticipation there from Stamango, the strong safety incomplete. Yeah, and those safeties for Charleston have to be ready for any deep threat that Las Vegas has. And we're looking at Britton and also Mason Kirby. Those two guys are probably the deadliest duo uh, that the SFL uh, is seeing so far in this league as we're hitting the week 10. Pretty wide now, here on third and short. Price, five step drop, looking out route near side. Top turning up field is Mason Kirby, and that's a first down for Las Vegas to the 16 yard line. Yeah, and, and Mason Kirby kind of having his whole hum as usual, uh, you know, season for his career. He's always flirted right. between that 750 to 1200 yard season. He's definitely on pace to have another 1000 uh, yard career here. He's just surpassed 700 this season after that catch. 14th in the league in terms of total receiving yards coming into today's ball game. Christ, under pressure, and he's mauled in the backfield. Down he goes as the Predators get into the backfield in a hurry. Mar Rivers with his team leading eighth and a half sack. Yeah, and then Charleston's going to want to pressure that pocket for Price so that there's no time to sling that football. That's the first sack. Hopefully they get more. Offset eye on second and 13, hand up, up the middle to Johnson. Johnson gets a couple, maybe a yard on the carry as Jacob Clear, who's pulling double duty for us, both in the stats truck and down at free safety, gets the tackle. And now it's pushed Las Vegas to a third and deep scenario, and this might be a favorable situation for the Fury because they like to sling it deep. And they're bringing four receivers deep. Look at the bottom of your screen, Doug Britton. Predators will play buff coverage on the wide receivers. Price, seven step drop, to look short underneath. That is safely caught short of the first down marker. That's a catch for Britton. And that'll set him up for a Matt Rage field goal. Yeah, that's uh, probably the first successful defensive drive there for Charleston, despite you know being so deep in your own territory, only pushing Las Vegas to getting a field goal out of this, but giving it to Matt Rage, who has been so perfect so far this season, Feels like a guarantee from uh, just looks to be uh, 28 yards. So Las Vegas, after getting the ball on the only 30 on Charleston's 32 yard line, can only manage 21 yards and they finalize the drive with a 28 yard Matt Rage field goal to take the game's opening score. It's three to nothing. If you're enjoying what you're seeing, and if you're new to the SFL, the Simulation Football League combines traditional sports, esports, and a role playing game into one. Team strategies are being executed in real time by our simulations as real life players compete on the virtual gridiron. For more information about the SFL, visit our website at simulationfl.net. The SFL, it's football for everyone. Here comes Adobe on another return here for Charleston. Nice spin move out of the tackle. Would be tackler, I should say, of Doug Britton. And he gets all the way up to the 20 yard line. And out comes Tentas Johnson and company once again. Their first drive ended on three plays and a tipped ball interception. Yeah, and you look at the two passing plays that Johnson threw on that drive. They were both down the middle here. And Las Vegas usually does a decent job when it comes to passes down the middle. So maybe if they're going to start passing it, maybe go to the sideline, see what they can get from there. This looks like a running formation. Two back sets. Johnson will hand it off up the middle, and that gets minimal gains. About one yard all told. I believe that was the fullback Sutherland on the call. No, check that. It was Saren Storm. Quick note on Storm, partner. It's uh, this the conversion from wide receiver to halfback just hasn't been working out so far this season. 
No, and you look at the numbers there. He's still trying to get to 200 yards of rushing so far this season. I think it's safe to say, Charleston, this season, the rushing game has been a failure. Less than 25 yards a game on the ground, and it continues to stall out. No gain on the play. Good tackle there from A.K. Jones, and let's meet the rest of the Fury defense while we have a moment. Sam Yeager, A.K. Jones, Michael Ruri, and Anthony Stover are your defensive linemen. Dave Drury, Maurice Lloyd, and John Osiris are the linebackers. Merrick Itera, Chris Magal are the corners with a qua quadruplet of safeties. Shout Allen, Justin Reside, Max Jackson, and Luke Swift. All slants over the middle. This time it's caught, and they will move the chains on a third down play. That's Adobe with the reception. Yeah, and why not go with your tried and true play that's always going to get a receiver open? It's going to be your 90 all slants with the three receivers going on a similar route. It's going to be one receiver that's usually open. It's either the inside or the outside receiver. In this case, Adobe was wide open down the middle. Easy throw and catch for Charleston. Ray Ray Colson and Rochelle Colston in the chat says, smash that like button. Please do. Please smash that like button. As Kentis throws it out route right side. That is got Adobe again. That's a seven yard pickup. And right now, Charleston playing probably the right game right now, kind of just kind of nickel and diming themselves forward. See if they can, you know, kind of lull Vegas to sleep defensively so they can go for that big money play because they know that the running game just hasn't been it uh, so far, so they'll sprinkle it in very, you know, seldomly here and really rely on Kentez Johnson's arm. Offset eye behind Johnson, two-step drop, has to get rid of it, it does. There's Murphy making up for the drop. Drop pass interception on the last drive. He hauls that one without any fuss, and he gets the first down. Yeah, and that one was a little bit easier of a catch for Murphy as well. He didn't have two defenders around him, where it might have caused a little bit of uh, anxiety when trying to handle that football on the catch. So it was a little bit easier for him, and it was an easy first down for the Preds. Bunch formation now near side. <laughs> Here is Johnson, goes play action. Has to get rid of it to the right side. Hit as he releases, and that's complete to Jay Hayden for nine yards as he trots out of bounds. Yeah, and here's the thing about Las Vegas' passing defense. They're going to give you those short yard plays. So Charleston is starting to take advantage early on, getting those shorter plays, not really going for first downs right away, at least just gaining those six, seven, eight, nine yards to set up second and short here on this drive. Eight men in the box here on second and short. Power eye. They go right side with Storm, and he cannot get out of the tackle. It looked like he had it for just a second, but it's Chris Magel who brings him down. Yeah, and it's just one of the things that Chris Magel brings to the board. He's not just, you know, an interception machine at times. He can be right. a TFL machine as well as he gets another one to his marker. That's going to be just his first this season, but we've seen him have multiple TFLs in a season as well. Three wideouts with a tight end on the line here on third down. Johnson in the gun with Storm off to his left, looking to throw near side. That's caught. Turning up field is Hayden. Hayden into the 34. And, and Adobe and Hayden have both been pretty dynamic through this drive so far. It was Do Adobe early on getting the, uh, you know, the early first down. And now Hayden getting himself a nice little short out route just past the first down marker. Did a great job to turn his body to gain a couple extra more. And now Charleston here is seriously threatening to score. This is a solid drive from the Predators. Most complete drive I see them have in quite some time. We'll see if it continues. Hand up right side. Excellent blocking up the middle and they'll battle pick up six yards for Nick Hoagland. Yeah, the, the one man that I'm probably the only one to call the immortal Hulk Hoagland, he should be the guy probably getting a few more carries down the stretch of the last bit of the season here. He's only got 43 carries to his name coming into this game, but he's got the strength to push forward for the six yards like we saw here. This time they go Sutherland's way and Sutherland is crunched a yard behind the line and that's a great tackle from Day Drury and Las Vegas saying early, you might be able to get one play in a row on the ground on us, but not two. Yeah, and, and Vegas is definitely ready for any uh, opportunity that Charleston's going to give on the ground because the, the offensive line hasn't been for Charleston this season. So Las Vegas is uh, feasting on TFLs. Johnson in the gun, looking over the middle. Murphy can't haul it in. 
to his credit, it was not a double coverage, and he was hit as the ball was arriving incomplete. Yeah, and he had two hard-hitting defenders around him. It looked to be Max Jackson, and I believe it was Luke Swift, both safeties kind of coming in and just demolishing him down the middle. And now it's going to force potentially a field goal here for Brad Brechett here. This to draw us back level again. A 45-yard attempt from near the left hash. Brechett for the SFL lead in field goal attempts. This 21st, it's up and good for his 18th make on the season. And we are tied once again at three. And now, Brett, I want to do something I haven't done in quite some time here we'll call it a game we're gonna do some chat shout outs i've seen will todd i've seen axel raven of course we've got rochelle colson with the super chat who else have you seen and want to shout out in chat here today bud well there's one guy for sure that i'm seeing in that chat and that's good old gino mcfly he's been a guy that i've seen through a lot of games here and he doesn't give he doesn't get enough credit on the field that he that he usually does so let's give a shout out to him and of course, DJ Woods chimes in there. Pick me, pick me. Well, I got to give him a double credit. He's also doing stats for us alongside Jacob Clear. So thank you to both of those gentlemen. Matt Ryan jumps in, says hello, and Britton gets the return up to the 26-yard line. Is that Mighty Ice now out of a contract from Indianapolis to, uh, joining in the chat here? Or is that a different one? Nonetheless, here, a very low-scoring start to this game here, Tyler. We were expecting fireworks to start things off, but not two field goals. Nox Aquas loves this league. Thank you for saying so. I think we all do too. And thanks for staying with us here this Sunday afternoon as back to pass is Price looking left side. That's Britain first down and more. That's a pickup up to the 41 yard line, a pickup of 15 on first down. And there's a guy that has a lot to his name so far. And you just have to look at his average uh, yards per catch. And that's, you know, pretty on average for him, a 15-yard catch there. He's averaging 15.3, you know, a couple more of those, and he could see himself, uh, see himself in the four-digit mark uh, for this season here. Back to the line they come after the 15-yard pickup from Britain. Two tight ends left on the line and a single back look. Sidearm sling over the middle, it's bobbled, and eventually picked up and caught. Couldn't haul it in the first time of asking, but John Blades, the wide receiver tight end convert, convert, picks up nine and a half. And that might have been one of the more interesting plays that we've seen so far this season because Blades bobbled the catch, and then it went into the hands of Geno McFly, who couldn't catch that either, and it went back to Blades. That's an interesting catch. Second inches, stretch play near side, and that's another... Las Vegas first down for Johnson. And you can just tell the stark difference in the offensive lines between these two teams, whereas uh, Charleston's doesn't give a lot of space for Saren Storm. You can just see the parting of the Red Sea proverbially for Scott Johnson. The Las Vegas offensive line does a really good job, despite the few attempts Johnson gets to get those yards. He still averages over five yards per carry because of that offensive line. Now the DB's backing all the way up to near the first down marker here on first down. Stretch play left side. Johnson again gets the call. And he picks up about three yards before he is brought down on the left-hand side. Let's introduce you now to the Predator defense. Thomas Matthews, Mar Rivers, Robert Cherry, and John Lawley are the defensive line with Kevin Brackett and Gino McFly flanking Jack Brown on the linebacking side. Mark Martin, not the race car driver, but the quarterback. Pairs up with Tyson Thorne and Sam Blockman. Jacob Clear, John Stamango, and Matt Ryan, the free safety, not quarterback, are your safeties as Johnson goes backward, tackled in the backfield by Matthews and company. Yeah, and in any defense, you want to make sure that you try to force the offense to be a one-dimensional team. And if uh, Charleston's going to focus on you know, eliminating the run game, those safeties and those corners have to be ready for the deep ball. This could be a threatening play with four receivers. Play action. Price over the middle. Open is the receiver. Kirby oh. near the line again. But the tackle from Matt Ryan denies him the first down for now as we hit the end of the quarter. 3 3 your score line and a tight one from Fort Mullottery. You're watching the SFL in Week 10 on YouTube.
Second quarter set to start. Tyler Falk and Brett Solberg and partner a very low scoring ball game from what we may have been expecting with the high flying Fury offense. Yeah, but even Jack's data said to themselves, this could be a potentially low scoring game. Look at the over under just 45.5 and they might reach the under still. Worth an inch is and Eric Price will bring his troops to the line in a very short yardage situation. The Line to gain marker and the down marker, hardly separated by maybe a millimeter, but Price still maybe trying to get the defensive line to jump offside. Play clock ticks under five seconds. Will they get it the playoff in time? No, they will not. They call a timeout out of the quarter break. You know, it was an interesting spot of the ball as well. And it's kind of unfortunate that the quarter ended there because that might have eliminated the opportunity for a challenge on the play for Las Vegas, but nonetheless, it's a fourth and inches. They try to jump Charleston offside, but the Predators defense stays disciplined and forces out Matt Rage once again, potentially here. This one's a deep one though, so it's it's gonna be a decision whether they, they punt it deep or they go for the field goal, which it looks like they will. So out comes Matt Rage for his second field goal attempt of the ball game. First one he hit from 45, this one from 49. Right sider checked that 28, now from 49, and he hits that one without any trouble like he hit the 28 yarder. And Las Vegas retake a three point cushion. Yeah, that one was a pretty close one too. It looked like he was veering a little bit to the left on that kick, but it had the clearance still. So Rage has the leg and he remains perfect this season now. He's going to say to himself, hey, I'm 15 for 15. Who else has got a perfect marker this season? So that was only the fourth drive of the ball game. The last three drives combined for the two clubs have resulted in points. Let it alone be field goals, but I'm sure neither side will be too unhappy that the other team has reached the end zone. Opposing offense has reached the end zone yet. Doby on the return gets up to the 26 yard line and now comes Charleston's offense who had the longest drive of the football game in to end that first quarter partner. A 12 play, 52 yard drive. We'll see if they can replicate matters here. Yeah, and right now it might be just a matter of, you know, dominating field possession time for Charleston, you know, take advantage of Las Vegas here so they don't have any opportunities to score the football. Four wide as Johnson goes into the gun. Back to pass, three-man blitz, it's bobbled, still being bobbled, and incomplete. It went to the, to the popcorn popper, but everyone's hands were just a little bit too greasy. And that ball also bobbled from just a five-yard gain, and that could have potentially been a first down catch from what looked to be uh, Davius Reed coming in from the inside, potentially trying to catch that ball. Very, very close call for Charleston to grab that football, but nonetheless, reset things here for second and 10. Second and 10, ball at the 27 yards. Pot lighting Max Jackson, who's 13 interceptions behind the all-conquering Eddie Gage with 100 interceptions. Jackson is three interceptions away from 90. Pass, left side, caught and room to work for Storm, but Storm gets blasted by Allen, and it's not the first time that Storm has had to take his lumps today. Yeah, and this is something that Charleston should have been doing more, at least at the start of the season, especially we were talking about a convert from wide receiver to halfback, is going to be those swing passes. You know that Saren Storm can catch and run. Give him that opportunity here, as you see. And off Sutherland, his second carry is a good one. It's a first down to the 37. Yeah, and it's right now just kind of pushing forward again. It looks like they're just content on trying to keep that football as long as possible and seeing what the uh, Vegas defense gives to them. Now that's just a two yard gain just to get that first down on a fullback dive. And now they can set themselves up for whatever on this first and 10. Three wide receivers here for Charleston, all on the left hand side of the offensive formation. Johnson looks for Hogan out of the backfield. He spins out of one, tries to shake and bake a second, but denied by Magle after picking up four yards. You know, they'll take the four yards on that pitch and catch to, to Hoagland there, as he had a little bit of strength to spin around past one defender and at least get some decent yardage. And again, those four, five, six yard plays, you know, relieves so much pressure from the quarterback on second downs. 
Meet Power Eye here on second down. Hand on left side. Storm got a brilliant hole to run through, and they will give him first down yardage. Yeah, and that one, also another questionable uh, position of the football on, on that run. They're going to give him the first down instead of maybe giving them third and inches. And, yeah, no challenge on that one. So it's going to be first and ten again for Charleston. They're, again, producing a very nice drive and chewing up some clock. Las Vegas' defense after the opening drive interception has looked quite bendable at the moment. Johnson into coverage, incomplete. Looking for Adobe, but just couldn't keep the catch in his grasp after the Luke Swift hit. Yeah, and that one was a really nice place ball as well from Johnson. As you can see, there was a modicum of Las Vegas defenders around with Luke Swift being the main, uh, not the main vicinity guy. That looked to be um, that looked to be Max Jackson in on the hit there with Luke Swift potentially trying to grab that bobbling football. But nonetheless, good coverage from the Vegas defense. It seemed like the replay just wanted to show Luke Swift running around a little bit, being a menace to society in the middle of the field as Jackson made a hit instead. Oh. And the handoff took a little bit too long to develop, and Las Vegas' defense was in there in a hurry. And man, has it been a day so far for the corners, at least. That's this time it's Merrick Itera coming in on the corner run uh, pressure and getting to the running back again. That's the second time already in this game that we've seen a corner get to the uh, running back behind the line of scrimmage. So it's third and long now here for Charleston. Looking to throw, three-man blitz over the middle, bounces off the helmet of Adobe and into the awaiting arms of Jackson. And that one was just so unlucky for the receiver. It just right off the tips of his fingers and goes right into the bread basket of Max Jackson just waiting for that football to come loose and another opportunity squandered here for Charleston and now Las Vegas could have an opportunity to extend the lead. Only seen field goals at this point in the ball game but now that's the second tipped pass interception here for Charleston in the football game. Swing pass near side and bouncing out of tackles and fighting his way for extra yardage is Scott Johnson. And quickly back to the Predators' offensive woes and really cannot fault Johnson on either of the two interceptions to this point. No, it's just the right. bobbling of the receivers because the, the first interception was just a bobble off the tight end Murphy. And this time it was a, a bobble off of one of the receivers and just falling into the hands of the Vegas defenders. And off Johnson, right side, out of one tackle and then clotheslined at the 49-yard line. Hefty hit from Bracken. Yeah, and then and the Iceman, former Vancouver Legionnaire, Kevin Brackett coming in with key tackles. I saw that a lot in Vancouver, and he has been, uh, I would say, a godsend for this Charleston defense at moments this season at the very least. Black single back look. They stretch it out right side with Johnson. Johnson couldn't get the corner, but could get the first down. Yeah, you could tell the Charleston defense was ready for a run up the gut. Wasn't expecting a stretch run from Scott Johnson. And what I've seen so far, at least in this last, uh, this whole season, is that the stretch run has just been more successful than usual, especially for teams like Vegas and, and Baltimore and Vancouver. Those guys, they know how to use the stretch run. Deep drop now from Price. Pressure coming, trying to get it off, and great coverage. On Mason Kirby from Jacob Clear. That will force the ball to the turf. Yeah, and you know, when you see a defensive play like that, it gives the Charleston fans a little bit of hope that this game is going to be tight throughout this contest. They've been doing really well in limiting Eric Price's open opportunities here. And it's been, it's been tough passes for a lot of this first half. They did have a close one last week versus D.C., 14-13 in that loss. So it's just a matter of time before things continue here. But that pass, wide open man coming back to the line of scrimmage. That'll negate forward progress. And Prince Wonder, the rookie, can only manage two yards on the play. 
Yeah, and that's one of the issues with the curl route because a lot of times with those younger players, they don't know how to quite turn things around properly. They'll have to step back a little bit so they can turn their bodies around. And that was just way too long of a turn and that resulted in, th in losing a lot of yards on that catch. Rice is gonna look to throw on third down. Right side, wide open. Mason Kirby, first down to the 30 yard line. And again, Charleston covering the middle and not worrying about the sidelines of the uh, of the field. Last time it was from a, a stretch run that led to an easy Scott Johnson first down, and this time it was an easy catch for Mason Kirby for a first down. Charleston has to be weary of that sideline moving forward. The down marker flips back to one as here comes Price looking to throw again near side. That one is caught by Britain, and Britain will pick up a back-to-back -back first down reception. This time they move him into the red zone. You know, we saw it maybe a few times on Las Vegas' first drive, but uh, the deep out route has been working because Charleston's pushing far back on that coverage, worrying about that deep uh, payday kind of pass from Eric Price that it's leaving the out route open for catches and runs. Two wide outs right along with a flexed halfback and they go to Johnson right side gets a block from Kirby on the right hand side that'll give him an extra yard to the 10. Yeah it's another big hit there from Kevin Brackett possibly a touchdown saving hit as well because Scott Johnson had perfect uh, blocking from both the offensive line and the receivers. Like you said, great block from Mason Kirby to get that extra yard or two on that run. DB's expecting a pass the end zone as they're standing on the goal line, except it's a run here for Johnson, spinning on a tackle and diving his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Las Vegas Fury. And how often have we seen that this season? I can answer that for you. Not that often. That's only Scott Johnson's third touchdown this season. We are so used to the air attack from Eric Price and the Las Vegas Fury offense that most of the time we forget about the dynamic running game of Scott Johnson and what he brings to the table. That brings a first touchdown to this game here and possibly extends this game to a 10-point lead. That's Scott Johnson's 55th career rushing touchdown, and it will give Las Vegas a nine-point lead. Here comes Matt Rage to make it a 10-point lead. It's up and good. 13-3, your score line here from Fort Mullery Memorial Stadium. The Pacific Division is up for grabs for the first time in years, and it's the struggling Lycans who can get their next crack at dethroning the Vancouver Legion this week on Impact Monday. Cam and Paul start the night off with this week in the SFL pregame at 7.15 Eastern before kickoff at 8.15 p.m. Eastern. Join us for Week 10's exciting conclusion with the Paul and Cam Monday Night Spectacular on SFL YouTube. Surging, not struggling. Wow, that's fun. I should learn how to read at this point. Brett, you should probably do uh, <laughs> ad reads from now on, hey. huh? Don't worry about it. After Monday, they're going to go back to struggling. Oh, boy. As speaking speaking from a Vancouver Legionite himself. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, and I, I know Ray Ray's in the chat, so here comes the Las Vegas-Vancouver rivalry brewing between broadcaster and chat member. Pass out near side, meanwhile. Is caught by Reed for a pickup of five before being ushered out of bounds by Chris Magel. You know, and we go back to Charleston. And we talked about this before the game started. How many times have we seen Charleston on the offensive side get themselves in these early uh, double-digit deficits uh, you know, in the season so far? It feels like it's just Groundhog Day over and over for them. They have to persevere at some point here, and it starts in this game against Las Vegas. Down by 10, second and five. Johnson over the middle. This time it's caught. It's a nice gain of 21 for Jay Hayden. And they're going to need those deep catches from the receivers moving forward here because it's going to be a matter of time before that Las Vegas air attack comes in and becomes a factor in this game. So why not start it early, throw it down deep to one of your receivers, and why not go to Jay Hayden, who has been your guy so far, now up to 
uh, 34 yards on his third reception, or sorry, 55 yards on his fourth reception. Johnson a few yards away from 100, and of course more than half of those have gone to Hayden. Left side storm, he tried to maybe act more like a power back and truck his way through defenders and only can muster up a yard before Itera says hello. And it feels like the one downside to Saren Storm's run game right now that kind of separates him from the rest of the running back field is he just doesn't have that turn. You know, when he turns down, turns down to the field or he goes through the sidelines, he doesn't turn as well as other running backs. And that's what's, you know, stopping him this season. Here comes Storm again. He, oh, oh my word. Is his head still screwed on? Maurice Lloyd, that man has a family. What a hit. Does he remember that he has a family anymore? That could be, you know, CTE Central from that hit there. I'm not sure. What a bone-crushing, trauma-inducing hit from Maurice Lloyd. Oh, Saren Storm takes a well-deserved break on the sideline as Charleston go all slants over the middle. There's Adobe. That's a first down to the 41 of Las Vegas. Yeah, and they're going to need to continue to use those kind of, you know, plays to find those open receivers. Again, all slants seems to be the tried and true play throughout the SFL because I always like to say it, one of the receivers is going to be open and Doby, once again, on the all slants, gets open for the catch. So Charleston still maintaining a solid drive. Now into Las Vegas territory. Pass over the middle. That is caught. Davius Reed. And they will push deeper into Las Vegas field. Yeah, and Davius Reed is a guy that has just been so criminally underrated throughout his career. We kind of forget that he's been in this league for 11 seasons now, and he's only been with the Predators for a second season here. But he's always that effective guy that if you need big catches, he will bring it to the table here. He's only got two so far in this first half, but don't be surprised if he becomes an impact player moving forward. That'll bring us to the two-minute warning here in the first half. Charleston down by 10, but with the ball, looking to keep this game close. You're watching Week 10 of the Simulation Football League, presented by 8 p.m. Music on YouTube. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Tyler Falk, Brett Solberg from Fort Mulatory Memorial Stadium here in the Charleston Predators taking on Las Vegas. And it's a fullback dive to get us going under two minutes and a good eight yard scamper for the fullback Terrell Sutherland. The big key here for Charleston is that they need to use all two minutes of this remaining time in the first half to score the football. Don't give Vegas a chance to extend that lead further before you hit the locker rooms. Use all the time possible, score in this, score in this drive, and make it a three-point game heading into halftime. Press coverage from the corners as they try and run with Storm, but the defense got a good jump on the ball, and they will get behind the line in a hurry. Seems like I'm saying that all over tonight. Anthony Stover comes up with the tackle behind the line. Yeah, it looked to be that right side, along with uh, Stover, came Michael Ruri with that joint tackle attack there for the loss. Third and five now, and they'll get five yards on this play, and that ball was tipped out of the air. Incomplete, Drury with it, and now it's a matter whether or not those five yards grant them the first down. No, I don't think it will. I think that's going to give them a third and two or a third and three situation here. For it. They have to accept it nonetheless. It's going to be Anthony Stover who got part of that tackle for loss in the last play with the infraction this time. And it, ge it gives a little bit of life to this Charleston drive here. It'll be third and in inches after oh. the penalty here for the Predators. Time for the nitty gritty. 101 to go here in the first half. Three tight end set for Charleston. They go up the middle with Storm. First down and more inside the 10. Oh, and they don't and want to go hurry up in this formation. The defense gets set. Johnson barks out orders and goes again. Up the middle for Storm. He gets pushed forward by the defense. Gets three yards. And then they will call a timeout. You know what? I, I think I see what they were doing here. They wanted to get at least inside the 10 before they stopped the clock which is a good idea here. Change the formation up because, you know, the run game, you know, albeit starting to get a little bit more decent 
moving into this end of this quarter, but it's it's not going to be good enough for this drive here. So set things up in a different formation for second and goal. Much more of a pass-oriented formation. Shotgun look with three wide receivers. Second and goal. Johnson, left side having to come back for it is the receiver Hayden. He, he will only get two yards. Yeah, but the more important thing there is that he stepped out of bounds, stopping the clock here. 40 seconds left on this third and goal, and they can switch up formations one more time to see if they can figure themselves into the end zone. They need a play that's going to result in positive yardage and doesn't give away the football. They've already gotten two interceptions today, zero touchdowns. Does that change here? Third and goal, Johnson. Underneath it is caught, but well short of the goal line. Stopped at the three yard line. Johnson threw that into du double traffic. Davies Reed hauls it in and it looks like they will summon Bretchett for a field goal. Yeah, and that one was just great coverage from Las Vegas, knowing that Johnson was going to try to throw it into the end zone. So they were basically going uh, goal line uh, protect at that point. Anything outside of the end zone line, just let that let that pass through. And that's exactly what we saw. This for Bretches should just be a gimme. For, from 20 yards out from the right hash. Snap spot, kick is up and it is good. Score now is 13 to six. Charleston chip into that lead. They now have it to within seven points. Miss any SFL action? It's hard to keep up with every play around the league. Check out highlights of SFL games on the SFL YouTube channel and on Highlight Nation provided by Victor's Valiant, YouTube's premier sports highlight maker. Subscribe to Highlight Nation and Victor's Valiant on YouTube for all your sports highlight needs. Here comes Britain on the return, trying to find a way out of the cluster at the 25-yard line, taken down to the 24, and we'll go to SFL headquarters for the first time today for the game update in Baltimore. Cam? And it may be your last. How has San Diego handled the toughest part of their schedule? 60 to 10. They trail Baltimore and Arizona combined. Ben Stack and Paper, two interceptions on this day. Baltimore doing Baltimore things. Mavericks in danger of falling to final field. Thank you. Thank you, Cam. Pass near side is caught by Britain. That picks up five yards, and that might be the final play of the half. And rather quickly, partner, I really like the Marine, uh, the Marine dress code that San Diego uniforms had. Unfortunately, they couldn't... Uh, uh, make do on providing a, an adequate salute to the Marines so far in the ballgame. Maybe they're running a little bit disciplined from their uh, from their players with such a low SOV heading into it, which is why they're kind of, you know, a, a little bit down on the on the leaderboard so far in terms of the standings. Potentially, as Blades picks up the reception that will see the clock hit triple zeros, and that will do it for the first half of action. So, partner, 13-6, the score line here. Give us your quick thoughts. As on the first half and give us a preview of what to expect in the second half. Honestly, despite the low scoring game, this is probably the best case scenario for Charleston. They're still within a reach of this game. They've kept things close to a Fury offense that's really only been limited to less than 100 yards of total passing offense in this game. If they can continue moving forward like that, they will have a chance to steal this game from Las Vegas and potentially push them out of that top four. Well, Las Vegas will get the ball to start the half as we welcome you back to Fort Millennium Memorial Stadium. Can they extend the lead again? As we are underway here in half number two, Doug Britton on the return, trying to make something happen, gets all the way to the 21-yard line and no further. Tyler Falk alongside Brett Solberg here in the booth. A special thanks to DJ Woods and Jacob Clear and the stats truck. And of course, a man you, who you just heard Cam and Irvine back at SFL headquarters, our producer and commissioner uh, for the SFL. And thank you to all of you who have joined us here on this Sunday afternoon to watch Las Vegas and Charleston. We cannot make the, this league possible without all of your support. Pass over the right-hand side is caught by Mason Kirby. That picks up 10 and an early first down here in the second half. Yeah, and Las Vegas, they definitely want to get that passing attack going because that's basically their bread and butter 
And if they right. if they can't have their passing uh, game go well against a Charleston defense, it it kind of shows that you know Las Vegas might have to work on things if they want to be a serious playoff contender. Max in the backfield, five-step drop here from Price. Left side caught, turning up field is Britton, and another first down here for Las Vegas. And they have come out of the gates firing here in the second half. Yeah, and again, it's that out route that just gives so much space in between. Charleston is so worried about that deep ball that uh, Las Vegas is really reaping the benefits of the out route. Again, another deep out route again to Britain, and he just turns and gets like an extra three to four yards for that first down. Out from their own 45-yard line. First down, Las Vegas. Offset eye behind Price. They'll hand off right side. Here comes Johnson, who runs into two defenders, taken down by Stamango and another member of that elite Charleston defense, and they gain three yards. Yeah, and you know what? Three yards ain't going to be too bad for Las Vegas because with that passing attack being so lethal, even just a couple yards will open up that playbook for second down uh, in comparisons to other teams that might struggle in second and seven situations. And that was Blotner, the second man on the tackle as it's second and down, pass, Price, middle, oh. pick up! And that's possibly the spark that the Predators need, it's Tamango! And you go with the defensive guy who has been that rock down the middle of the field. John Stamango, fourth interception this season and covering Mason Kirby's post route perfectly on that play, giving Charleston a little bit of life here and now has a possibility to take this lead if they can prove to be successful on this drive. There was a three or four way tie in the Charleston defense for the team lead. Now Stamango has number four. He now leads the team. And off right side and Storm scampers his way forward for a pickup of six yards on his opening carry and a half. Yeah, right now that's the best case scenario for Charleston to start things off on the ground with Saren Storm getting some decent blocking from uh, basically every player on that Charleston play to get Storm those six yards and open up that playbook for second down. Two wideouts off to the right as Johnson goes into the gun flanked by Sutherland and Storm. Looking right oh. side, tipped up in the air but it falls harmlessly to the turf. Maggle read that out route perfectly. Yeah, and, and those two those two star corners that we talked about at the beginning of the game, Itera and Magel, are going to have some tough tasks, uh, especially in the second half, because the receivers of Charleston have been getting some nice catches, and that's a great way to kind of just break things up there with uh, Magel once again getting a pass deflection. Third down, eye formation, Johnson, quick drop, trying to hit a quick one over the middle, and does. Jay Hayden is there over the middle on the slant pattern and catches it before he can be tackled by Itera. And again, it's just another great throw from Kentez Johnson where only his receiver can get to that football despite a defender drapesing over um, Jay Hayden throughout that route. Great job from Kentez Johnson. Now from midfield, come the Predators offense. Lance over the middle, just going to fling it out near side to Hoagland. Hoagland cannot get around Shot Allen. Does pick up a yard and no further. You know, that should be one of those swing plays sent to Saren Storm, who can maybe get a couple extra yards from him because we know Nick Hoagland is that power guy, and sometimes he can get a spin move every now and again, but it's not guaranteed every play. So maybe next time with that swing pass, head Storm's way. <laughs> Backs in the backfield, they will go storm this time on the ground through the middle. Itera brings him down, at, not before. Storm can pick up five yards and bring up another third down for Charleston. And stellar work of just sheer will from Saren Storm to push forward because it looked like he was going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. But he pushes himself forward to get that extra couple yards and gives a little bit of life on this third down situation for just five yards to the first down line. How about this for a stat line? This is the 11th third down try here for Charleston. They're six of 10, pass right side. There's Adobe, make them seven of 11 on third down. A very good improvement from where they were this season to today. 
Yeah, and you look at it, Charleston's, you know, you know, bottom five in the league in terms of third down conversions at 52%. Looking at a 7 of 11 conversion, that's, you know, a, a great convenience store for one. And second, a great number if you're looking at it offensively. First and 10 again here for the Predators. Swing pass, Hoagland gets a block this time, and he tried to shake and bake Itera, but Itera is rarely phased on those fancy moves. Yeah, and especially with Nick Hoagland being a bigger body than most run, uh, most running backs in this league, sometimes that little shimmy shake, right. that shuck and jive, the juke moves, ain't going to work as well as it would be for like a smaller uh, smaller running back such as Saren Storm, so this time it just doesn't work out for the extra yards. Four wide receivers, I think that's three wide receivers, the tight end, flexed in tight, and they will go to Murphy, right side, it was all alone, and it's a good pickup of 10 yards for Brian Murphy, and another Predator first down. They use that trips bunch to the left there to kind of distract the Vegas defense and not worrying about the tight end, and the tight end just used a simple short out, got himself wide open, great uh, pitch and catch to Barton. On the outskirts of the red zone now, as Charleston pick up first down number 13. Pass over the middle, that one is caught for a gain of about five yards to the 17. Now they and are in the red zone. Now you can really see what Charles, Charleston's been trying to do all game. You could just see throughout this game, this is probably, this is now their third drive uh, in this game that has gone over four minutes on the drive. And this is what Charleston has been wanting to do, dominate the time possession to give themselves a chance to win this game. Las Vegas expecting a run, throwing nine men in the box, but Storm oh. scoots through it all, and Storm gets inside the 10 yard line, down to the seven, first and goal, Charleston. And that was about a needle sized hole for Storm to get through offensive line wise. And you'll see it here, just getting guided through by Terrell Sutherland. That key block was the factor in getting Storm that first down. And more importantly, for the first time in this game, uh, or first time, uh, no, second time in this game, sorry, uh, Charleston is going to get themselves a goal line scenario here. That's the longest run of the ball game for Sarah Storm, a 10 yard pickup. Offsides on the call, they will try and go up the middle with Sutherland, but give them half the distance to the goal line after the jump on the line. Yeah, and that's gonna give them a first and goal at the four yard line now, which is gonna, again, another sigh of relief for the Charleston offense here, and gives themselves, again, three plays to get to the end zone here. I would suspect this first play would probably go to either Hoagland or Sutherland again. Jaeger, the defensive end, gets called off sides and it's first and goal for about the three and a half yard line here for Charleston. Three wide receivers all near side of the formation, only one quarterback out there, but they will run it with a couple extra blockers. Here comes Hoagland, Hoagland scores! Uh -oh. Touchdown, Nick Hoagland, and the Predators come roaring back to life. And that is just sheer will and determination to get yourself into the end zone. That is the power of the immortal Hulk Hoagland getting himself his first touchdown this season in what feels like the Russian game has been so anemic this season. That has been the benefactor of getting Charleston back in this game with an extra point away to tie this up. First rushing touchdown of the ball game does have two receiving touchdowns, does Hoagland. But all the same, it doesn't matter how you get them. Charleston with this extra point. Snap, spot, kick up, and is good. We are back to a tie ball game at 13 apiece here from Fort Mulatterly Memorial. Naz, next Saturday on Next Level Sports, the Central Division takes center stage. The six and two teams, the Minnesota legend and Tulsa Desperados will decide who will be in the driver's seat of an automatic playoff berth down the final stretch of the regular season. Catch all of the action on Next Level Sports for a complete channel guide. Visit NLSE. Dot com. And if you can't tell from Minnesota, that should probably seal the deal right about there as Britain takes the return up to the 23-yard line. Jeez, favoritism much for screaming Minnesota. I, freaking, I think my eardrums got bursted after you said that, but...
Now Las Vegas, first, I would say first time in a while this season that maybe their backs are against the wall against this Charleston team. Eric Price and company definitely need to show up on this drive. Punch set left side to begin the drive. Price. Play action. Looking to throw left side over the defender. Good pitch and catch to Britain. Yeah, that one was a tough situation there for Mark Martin. He couldn't go boogity boogity boo on that one and catch the catch the football. He was maybe a little bit too far ahead, which gave Britain the opportunity to grab that catch. As you can see on this uh, front view here, a little bit too much separation between him and, and Britain to, to try to make that interception. And again, another easy out route catch and run for Las Vegas. That has been the story of the game so far. On the 36-yard line now after the first down. Rice looking right side. That is caught by Johnson. Good move. Ankle breaking move on Blotner, and it's a nine-yard pickup. Yeah, and they're gonna they're gonna take that, but that's that's really close to the first down marker. I would have given them the first down again in this scenario, but you know what? Not too bad for a 9.9-yard .9 play there for second and inches. So now they come up with two wide receivers as coverage backs off a little bit. Five, maybe eight yards in between the two of them. It'll be a free first down. After the penalty, Johnson goes nowhere, but it won't matter. Las Vegas, first down. And now Charleston, mount back in this game. It's now level ground. It feels like the defense is getting a little bit jumpy here, both from the defensive backside and now from the line side. It looks to be more Rivers with the infraction this time. A free first down for the Fury, and they can set things up to however they want to. Again, I'm thinking another run to Scott Johnson. So indeed, we will move the chains. I believe they called last penalty on Rivers. And here comes Las Vegas' offense back to the line. Just on the other side of midfield. Single back look. Two tight ends left. Twice to throw. Pumps once. Gets it, oh. rid of it over the middle. That's caught by Jackson Roberts. Yeah, and that one, again, when you go with uh, with a tried and true um, running route, there you see the dual the dual all slants from the tight ends uh, from Blades as well, and this time just a, another easy catch. One of those receivers is going to get open, and I feel like I, I feel like a broken record every time I say it, but the statement stays true throughout the games. Las Vegas' drive looking very much unimpeded at this point. Fifth play of the drive, play action, pressure coming, and finally some backbone from Thomas Matthews. Down goes Price for the sack. Yeah, and again, I talked about it earlier in this game where the key to Charleston's defense has to be closing up the pocket for Eric Price. Only the second sack in this game, but they need to continue applying this pressure to Price so that it becomes insurmountable for him to throw, and it becomes inevitable for them to throw deep balls to, to tight coverage. Bunch set, top of your screen. Price looking to throw on second and 18 over the middle, nearly taken away for the second time by Stamango. Pass intended for John Blades, the tight end. Yeah, and again, they're trying to go with the tight end option here, and they're trying to go a little bit deeper with their options, but that Charleston defense, where it feels like their motive has been just defending any deep passes possible, allowing those out routes to happen, now it's forcing Vegas on a, a second and 18 to throw deep. And now again, they have to throw it deep on third and 18. Third and musket ball range. Third down, pass deep over the middle. What a grab! Taken away by Jacob Clear. And Clear gets to the 40-yard line and the Predators take all the momentum. And guess who it was going to be aimed towards? The man of the hour, the man of the season, Probably the SFL's most improved player this season in Doug Britton, and they played it perfect again. Jacob Clear staying in the vicinity of Britton, staying in front of the football, getting his hands outreached to grab the interception two minutes ago here in the third, and momentum has swung fully to the Predators' side here at home. So it's first and 10 now for Charleston from the 40 yard line. 
Tie ball game, two minutes to go in the third quarter. Pass over the middle, bobbled again, and this time, fortunately for the Preds, it does not come off of Murphy's hands and into the hands of a Las Vegas defender. And for a few times in this game here, Charleston has flirted with the fire of throwing it down the middle. Las Vegas has really made it a key to uh, block up any of the passes down the middle here. And it's worked for Charleston a couple times, but they really need to start looking sideline here because I think that's going to be their more open options at, at the later stages here. And uh, Sutherland, nothing doing. Gang tackled at the line of scrimmage. And it brings up third down. And yeah, this is going to be another tough third down. We just saw it from Las Vegas on a third and 18. Now it's a third and 10 for, for Charleston at the 40-yard line. They're going to have to think to themselves to throw something that they uh, that the Vegas defense hasn't seen yet. We're going to see three receivers to the bottom of our screen here. Charleston have been a perfect two for two on third down in the third quarter. Over the middle, Murphy holds that one in. And they're now three, three for three in the third quarter and eight of 12 on the ball game on third down. Yeah, you gotta love the passing thrown from Kentez Johnson in these last two quarters here. It's just been absolute threading of the needles here. Just when Murphy gets a little bit ahead of his defender, Johnson throws that ball out. It's perfect timing and a perfect first down for Charleston with their backs against the wall on this drive. The 45 yard line power eye look out at Charleston as they cross midfield. Swing pass near side, there's Storm. Storm up the field. Storm gets the first down to the 33. And there is the Saren Storm that you want in this game. That swing pass where he can use that burst of speed that he was known for back in London to get himself moving forward here for these Charleston drives. Just perfect blocking from the offensive players as well to give Storm that incredible space on the left side. Just a great play overall. They need to do that more often on this drive. Quick look at Jay Hayden's numbers, thrown to six times. He's caught all six of them for 61 yards. One of the more productive receivers here for Charleston. This time they go with the run with Storm, but that play just hasn't worked. That's the beginning of the football game as it seems like Las Vegas know exactly when Charleston's calling it and they get in the backfield every single time. Yeah, it just feels like any time that Charleston either goes with a run inside to the right side or a stretch play out left, it gets stopped by the Vegas defense. And that brings us to an end to the third quarter. Get your fours, 12s, 86s, 68s up in chat. We got a good one, 13 apiece. Who wants it more? We come back, fourth quarter action. Before that, Curtis, White Noise. Take it away. The Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or account of the game without the express written consent of the league office is prohibited. 13 apiece. Who thought about that? Certainly not Jack Stata, who had a 17.5 spread between the two clubs. But maybe they thought about that. There's Stormer in the backfield tag team and alongside Sam Yeager. That's a loss of nine. And here we thought at the beginning of this game that Las Vegas was just going to take advantage of uh, Kentez Johnson like that. And surprisingly enough, that's only the first time that this defensive line has gotten to Kentez Johnson. Charleston's done a great job in protecting Johnson, but this time, finally, the Vegas defense gets to, gets to Kentez and pushes them back here for third and a country mile. They've certainly gotten the backfield 10 times before that. Now they're getting back to the backfield for the 11th time. Under pressure, Johnson has to avoid one. Can't uh, avoid the second one. Gets speared by Luke Swift as he falls over. Fourth and 22, the drive stalls out. And man, oh man, how important were these two sacks for Las Vegas as Charleston was definitely in Brad Bretchett range before those two plays. And then sack, and then another sack pushes them back 12 yards and now they're way out of field goal range and have to punt this football. No points for you, Charleston. Now it comes on the leg of Eric Blueberry. Has to get this one away, it does. Try to angle it toward the near sideline. It'll bounce at the nine. A Charleston hop, and the man stops at the six yard line. Great hands, teamwork. 
And now the Predators defense has a little bit more room to breathe for Vegas. They are backed up deep. Yeah, and this one, again, this one could be a little bit of a trap here for Charleston. We've seen Las Vegas throw these deep bombs before. And I would be looking at Doug Britton, wherever he is, have three guys, I would say, keyed on him on this play. First and 10. Play action. Price looking left side. It's oh. nearly taken away. Tyson Thorne. Oh, he was looking for his first interception in season 20, and he nearly had it. And that would have been back-to-back -back fantastic plays from Tyson Thorne. He was just on special teams, and he caught the ball at the five-yard line to have Vegas' drive start. Then he goes on defense and almost grabs a pick six. That's two fantastic plays from Tyson Thorne. Tight end flex left side, eye formation here for the Fury. From their own six-yard line, quick drop. Left, right side, caught. Short gain of about four yards for Kirby. Yeah, and again, it's just, it just feels like Charleston is just geared up and ready to go on this drive. This time with that short out, somebody was there ready to go. Right. They're saying, not this time. You're not going to get that catch and run on an out route. And they're going to push it for third and six here. Gut check time for the Vegas offense. Can they convert? They need to get to the 16. Play action. Right side, easy catch for John Blades. That will move the chains. And again, it's the deep out this time for Las Vegas that works out. And it has been the story of Charleston's woes defensively. They've been allowing that deep out, which has caused a catch and run each and every time. This time, instead of going to the one, one of the two hit receivers, they go with the tight end and John Blades. First down now for Vegas. Right side, that's caught, and late oh, late hit, a little unnecessary roughness, and giving him the business is Jackson Roberts back on the man who hit him. Now that, I don't know if that's a late hit there. A lot of the times, you see, you, ah, I'm, it's tough for me. It feels like it's a little bit of, you know, clashing feelings because it is a little bit of a later hit, but it wasn't too late after the whistle, so you could see on Charleston's end where they could be frustrated from John Stamango getting the penalty. Because like you said, uh, it's, it's, it, it's, it's so tough and it just lands on it after jumping through. So maybe it should be a lesson to these defenders not to dive all the time for these tackles. So Las Vegas get some free yards. The 39 yard line, quick drop over the middle, caught first down, across the midfield stripe goes the Pre Fury that's called in by Blades. And sometimes penalties like that can just shift momentum. And with Charleston having all the momentum, especially during this latter stage of the third quarter, heading into this final stanza, and that late hit penalty feels like it's kind of just changed things just in the air a little bit in favor of Las Vegas, where that felt like an easy first down. You're just joining us. It's been a good one. 13-13 here from Fort Mortreline Memorial Stadium here in Carolina. Pass right side. It is caught by Mason Kirby. Gains about nine yards. And if you're one of the five guys that has picked Las Vegas to run away with it in the survivor pool, a.k.a. Eddie Gage, a.k.a. Scott, or a.k.a. Gunny McGuire, a.k.a. Johnny Pickler, you're, you're hoping Las Vegas comes down the field and scores on this next drive as R62 will listen to the challenge call from Las Vegas to see if that was a completed catch. And it looked like a for sure catch from our eyes right away here. We'll have to see on this one. That is close. That is very close. I'm not sure if Kirby got all his foot in bounds there. R62 with the call. And they will rule against... Las Vegas, Charleston got the challenge flag out there. No timeout called, so it's an incomplete pass. Yeah, and then instead of a second and one, it's going to be a second and ten. And Vegas is going to have to set themselves up for another pass play here. A very uh, Again, it's what they usually do here on second down and, and deep. Two wideouts, tight end flex left side in the direction of the eye. Bryce, deep shot, and it's caught! Oh my goodness, Price bit that one. <laughs> this is the eye of a needle, eye of the storm, eye of something. Nice catch. Yeah, and again, it's to John Blades, a guy who hasn't been, you know, quite involved in the offense this season. He's usually the 1,000-yard guy out of this team and now converting 
to the tight end spot. He hasn't had a lot of touches this season, but when they need the most, he's going to step up. Third and five. Charleston might want to pressure Price here. They will send four. Play action. Deep shot over the middle. It is car diving reception by Britton. Inside the 15, down to the 14 yard line. First and goal, Las Vegas. And with Charleston doing so good preventing the deep ball, they just have a misstep this one time in such a critical situation for Las Vegas to get a first down. They go to Doug Britton, who just breaks open just enough to grab the catch. Three wide here from the 14-yard line. Price looking over the middle. Caught! End zone! Touchdown, Prince Wonder! His third touchdown in his rookie season. And man, that's a great time to get your, your touchdown in this game here, Prince Wonder. Again, just uh, it felt like after that late hit on this drive against Charleston, it just shifted the air. Uh, in favor of Las Vegas because afterwards it just felt like all the catches except for one where it got overturned was just easy for Las Vegas and you can see it on this drive easy catches with the first deep catch of this game for Las Vegas and now leading to a touchdown here where they finally separate themselves from Charleston. Odd comes Matt Rage to try and tack home the extra point little dicey but it's up and good 20 to 13 is now your score. Do we want to remind you that 8 p.m. music is unrivaled music to bring your stories to life, inspiring every production with the world's most robust and constantly refreshed music collection, state-of-the-art technology, and world-class customer service. 8 p.m. music is the official soundtrack of the Simulation Football League. To explore their library and to find the perfect tracks for your projects, visit 8pmmusic.com. On the return now, the Dobie needs a good one. Can only get to the 22-yard line, and that is where Charleston will take over. They had a good drive last time, but back-to-back -back sacks knocked them out of field goal range and seized them down by seven. And now momentum favorably on Las Vegas' side. Charleston needs to persevere once again at home to get the momentum back, and they need to score on this drive. No field goals out of this. They need to hit the end zone. But backfield run for Sutherland, reverses field, goes left side, and the fullback with a nice run for five yards. Yeah, and they'll need that every now and again, just the run play to kind of have Vegas, you know, second guess whether they should go with a passing defensive play. So not a bad first play here for Charleston, set things up for second and medium. Back to the line they come. Just over six and a half to go in the final frame of regulation. Our I look, hand off, goes for Storm. Storm one on one with the defender and cannot get out of Maggle's grasp. Back a yard goes the Predator offense. Yeah, and it seems like Las Vegas has had Saren Storm's number on multiple occasions in this game and has been in the form of the run support from uh, the corners. And again, Chris Magel gets himself behind the line. That's his second TFL here today. He to draw off a play to get six yards. All slants over the middle. That one is dropped. Oh. Steven Bonnell, the second, couldn't haul it in. Fourth down. And that is a just so unfortunate if you're a Charleston fan here. For the last two and a half quarters, they Charleston has had such successful drives of three plus minutes, and they are going to get stifled here, only getting the football for 50, 56 seconds, which isn't ideal because Las Vegas has the lead, and now they can threaten to blow this game wide open. Here comes our Blueberry. No shenanigans this week as he punts this one away. A good punt. Spinning away as Britton gets a couple more blocks. He's got a few more out of a tackle and finally dragged down at his own 47-yard line. A, span, a smashing return for Britton. And yeah, it's, it's sometimes just the toughest thing to cover Doug Britton, whether he's running a route or he's on special teams because he just has that dynamic agility and speed that sometimes can be untouched. And it's giving Las Vegas great field position to start this drive. Three wide. 
Here for the Fury, 5.51 to go now in the fourth quarter. Quick drop pass over the middle. Wonder on an identical looking play. The touchdown play couldn't hold that one and hit immediately as the ball was arriving. Yeah, this is the first time that we're talking about Jack Brown in this game. He's been relatively quiet. He's usually the anchor to this defense for Charleston, but he hasn't been involved enough, I would say, defensively uh, as uh, you know, at least as I and, it, and for sure as Jack would want to be in this game. Las Vegas has done a good job of game planning around the stalwart middle linebacker. Now it's second and ten. Again, slants over the middle. This one is caught by Britton. That'll move the chain to the 36-yard line, maybe a yard or two outside of field goal range. Yeah, so the really, the important part here that last catch. Uh, that deep catch from Doug Britton there. He pushed him over a 1,000 yards this season. So congratulations to him for his first 1,000-yard campaign. And he's just going to keep pushing forward here. Another 100-yard game for Doug Britton this season. He has been a dynamo for this Vegas offense. He's been absolutely fantastic. And another yard here for Las Vegas will really put the pressure on Charleston. And they get to Johnson in the backfield. They'll knock him back a yard. Good pursuit in the ball carrier from Blotner and company. And it's second and 11. Yeah, and that's what they need to do here. Again, Charleston wants to make this Las Vegas team one-dimensional so the defensive backs can be ready for those deep air raid shots from Eric Price. Eliminate the run game and force the offense to pass the ball deep. Second down, carry up the middle, nothing doing. Maybe a yard on the play by Scott Johnson, taken down by Brackett. Yeah, and this defensive uh, unit right now uh, really stepping up on these um, these run plays here. Now, really, Las Vegas has to force to throw this football. If there's an incompletion, this might be punted away. Third and 10, here for Price and the Fury offense. Play action, back to throw, under pressure, over the middle, diving, jumping catch by Britton. He's done it again. That is just ridiculous. And again, Doug Britton splits the defense, the same two players again. Matt Ryan kind of stays a little bit back. Mark Martin tries to stay on pace, and it forces John Stamango to move to the spot to try to prevent the catch from Britain and to no avail. Another deep catch from Britain and inside the goal, uh, inside goal line territory. First and goal now from the nine. Bryce will take as much time off the play clock as possible. Hand off and clobber to Scott Johnson. Kevin Brackett there, only a gain of one on the play as the clock will begin to whirl. And you have to give credit to this Charleston run defense, which has given Scott Johnson just a tough time out today. Just 3.3 yards per carry from him on 13 attempts, despite the touchdown that he has on the board for Las Vegas. It's been a tough one out there for Johnson. Wormack comes inside, leaving alone. Mason Kirby wide open on the right-hand side. We'll see if they try and go his way. No, run. And Johnson out of a tackle and into the end zone. Touchdown, Fury. It's now a two-score ball game. And the thing is, Charleston guessed right on what Vegas was going to do. They were going to run it with Johnson. But Scott Johnson, it felt like he was hearing me in the booth as he was saying things were a little bit struggling for him. And he says, you know what? Let me just stretch to the outside and get another score for Las Vegas to break this lead open. And potentially this could be ball game with just a little bit over three minutes left to go in this game. So out comes Matt Rage to try and tackle on the extra point, which will make it a 14-point ball game, which he nails 27-13. And now Charleston looking official playoff elimination dead in the eyes. Yeah, and if you're Charleston, you definitely don't want to do that. With the last three minutes, you got to fight for every second left in this. Just throw everything at them. See if you can get back into this game with 3.09 left to go. Here comes Rage, who kicks this one away. On the return is Adobe from his own goal line. Looking left side, nothing doing. Tackled down now at the 23-yard line 
And now the Charleston offense is set to go to work here with 3.05 to go. Again, if I'm Charleston here, any run play is just thrown out the window. You're going past, and you know every now and again, I'm thinking you're going deep to Davia Street. That'd be the guy that I'm looking for here. Four wide receivers. Now for Johnson as he gets set to work here on this drive. Down by 14, need a couple of big plays. They will stretch it, left side. Good spin move from Storm as he picks up three and gets knocked out of bounds. But unfortunately, for the Fury, down is Chris Magel. That could prove a thorn in the side of the Fury defense. Yeah, and that's that's huge there because if Magel stays out for the rest of the game, they've only got one true key uh, corner to really look for, and that's Merrick Itera. And that might leave a hole open for Charleston to exploit through, at least for this drive here. So I'd be looking at who has replaced Chris Magel on the side and aim his way. So second and seven. Now for the Predators. Three wide receivers, two backs on either side of Johnson in the gun. Will they attack the safeties after the Magel injury? They go deep. Right side, good deflection from Max Jackson. Incomplete, third down. And yeah, that's a big deflection there because that was the deep ball that Charleston wanted. They wanted to get that, that money ball essentially to get to the end zone as quickly as possible and now pushing themselves back on this third and seven. They have to go for it one more time. Four wide receivers and in all likelihood you're looking at four down territory. Johnson, slant pattern over the middle, deflected away, incomplete, fourth down. Yeah, now it's do or die here for Charleston. First ill-advised throw of the game, I would say, from Cantez Johnson. He has been pretty great all game so far in trying to prevent, you know, interceptions. The two that he has on the board, not his fault. So he's been great uh, otherwise in this game, but you can see the pressure starting to build onto the shoulders of Johnson with that throw, just too ill-advised. Another four wide receiver. Do they go all slants again? Fourth and seven. All slants again. Over the middle. This time it's caught. First down to the 42. Up to the hurry up they come. Yeah, be, don't, don't be surprised if we see all slants on the left side again. Go again. Slant pattern. Swing pass. Left side. It's Hoagland. Can't get out of the tackle. Only gets a yard. And they're back to the line again. Yeah, it seems, like, it, it seems like one of their only plays on this play set here. So again, slants to the left side. Slants, swing pass, they go right side. Not caught by Reed. Cross midfield down to the 42, 219 to go. He's just got to keep spreading his options out. That's great to get the, uh, to get Reed involved with that. Still have all three timeouts. Swing pass, left side, Hoagland. Hoagland gets knocked out of bounds. And that'll stop the clock with 2.10 to go. And we quickly go to SFL headquarters for a game break from Baltimore. Did San Diego make a dead camp? Well, you'll see on this play that they absolutely did not. Enzo Bolt with his second pick of the day. He's going to take it all the way back to the house. Scar Patterson for right. five. And the Vultures win 43-17 over the Mavericks. San Diego falls to five and four. Baltimore seven and one. Back to you guys in charge. Baltimore doing Baltimore things, as Rochelle Colson and Cameron Irvine would say. Thanks, Cam. Second and eight. Two and ten left to go here. Pass left side cut by Adobe and he's out of bounds. Only took three seconds off the clock. Yeah, and they'll take this third and three scenario here where they can, again, stopping the clock, they can switch plays up or they can stay with the same play uh, that they used here to just get that first down. But the key here is for Charleston is to keep this drive alive. And what with the clock ticking here, don't be surprised if they go deep with one of these plays. Need to try and air it out. Still no sign of Chris Magle on the field. Back to throw, near side, caught falling down as Murphy. He's touched down at the 29-yard line, and that will bring us to the two-minute warning. Charleston on the comeback trail. Can they do it? Down by 14. You're watching the SFL on YouTube. Final two minutes of regulation here in Charleston. Can the Predators survive Las Vegas. Can they come back down by 14? 
need to do something more than just all slants. Murphy with the catch. That picks up 10 and a first down. And as I say it, all slants seems to be working here. Under a minute 50 to go. They need to get into the end zone. Slant pattern again. Murphy with the catch again. That picks up seven, and they're back to the line. Identical formation. They might It might be trying tree here, but it's only getting minimal gain. They need to find something deep to stop the clock. 42nd pass the ball game. Pass is caught. Over the middle, that is a good one. All the way to the one yard line. That's the man who couldn't hold it on the last drive. That's Steven Bono the second. Back to the line. First and goal for the one. Might want a QB sneak. They won't. Slap pattern over the middle. Murphy's got his second touchdown of his career. And man, that's a great job from the Charleston offense, especially with just that play set, that hurry up play set. They didn't go to the same target twice on those on that all slants play. You went to different targets and it kept Las Vegas guessing here and it left Murphy wide open in the middle of the end zone. The important part here is that there's still 79 seconds left here. So after the extra point, still a seven point game and they could get an onside kick maybe to recover. So it all matters whether or not they can get two kicks to go their way. Can they get this extra point? Wretched. Good spot, good hold, good kick is good as well. Seven point ball game. Now it's on the leg again of Wretched to get a good bounce. That's the big key here. It's got to get a good bounce and you have to make sure that it tips off the hands of one of the hand players for Las Vegas. Got to be ready, Charleston. Wretched has it on the tee, ready to go. Kick is off. It will be hauled in cleanly by Las Vegas, and now it's up to the defense of the Predators to deny Las Vegas any yards to get in field goal range. Yeah, that was a very, very poor kick from Wretched there, as you can see. Vegas starting at Charleston's 38-yard line, so not even five yards Las, Ve Las Vegas needs to gain just to get a field goal out of this drive. So it's really key on stopping Scott Johnson three straight times. Maybe just two. Linebacker showing blitz. Here they come. Johnson near side. Good spin move. He gets out of one and gets inside of 35. Yeah, that's a big, big play from Scott Johnson. As you can see, the pressure coming Charleston uh, from Charleston heading to Scott Johnson, but he stayed composed, tried to find his openings, and used his agility and spin moves to get himself the key, crucial four yards. They go back to the line. All likelihood another run here for Johnson. Indeed, stretch play, good spin move, another good move, and Johnson's just finding in roads where there are none and picking up yards and right now they're inside the field goal range of matt of uh, matt rage at the 32 that would give them at least a 47 48 yard field goal which rage has made before so really focusing on not losing any yardage here that's the big key for las vegas don't do anything crazy they're gonna pass it over the middle bobbled and complete Clear got his hand up there, which will also save them a timeout if the crazy scenario happens, but they need Matt Rage to miss or block. Yeah, that was a desperation hand in the air from Jacob Clear as well, because he was way out of position from the from the receiver to get any, you know, opportunity to pass or to get that interception. Station pass deflection. Now Matt Rage critical to make this field goal for the Fury. 49 yard attempt from the left hash to get a 10 point lead for Las Vegas. Kick is up a little high and it is good. It sneaks through the goal posts and it's 30 20 Vegas. And the big key here two possession game now with a minute to go. And I don't know if Charleston has the play set to, get, to have a deep ball ready to go, just a one play drive so that they can respond in kind. So it all depends on how Charleston lays this out, at least for the last 30 seconds, the first 30, 30 seconds of their drive. That rage and the air and the ball is sent to Adobe. 
Dolby from about three yards outside of his own end zone, looking left side, taking down at the 25. And Charleston will have 57 seconds. One timeout to get a touchdown, an onside kick, and another field goal to tie this ball game up. They are going to need a Moultrie miracle. Yeah, forget about any of these short passing plays. You got to go deep. Four wide receivers trips to Johnson's left on first down. Looking to throw. Slant pattern over the middle. Deep shot caught for a gain of about 13, 14 yards. That was Hayden on the reception. Clock begins to tick some more. 45 seconds to go. Need a deep ball. Still they go all slants. Pressure coming. Looking for Hayden incomplete. And they wasted a lot of clock just trying to form themselves on the hurry up there. And you can see two plays in 17 seconds. Not really ideal uh, for Charleston. Now it's second and 10 for, uh, with 40 ticks left. Second and 10. Ball Back to the line goes Johnson. He's 34 to 46, closing in on that 50 burger of passing attempts in a ball game. Swing pass near side. That's Hoagland who stays in bounds. And Charleston will have to burn their final timeout. And there's their last lifeline there. And again, another six seconds on just that one play. They need to use their deep option. There's no doubt about it anymore. It's It's got to be deep. And you can't be really nickel and, nickel and diming it from here on out. You've got no timeouts. The clock is against you. Four wide receivers. Trips off to Johnson's left. Hospital looking to attack the middle of the field again. Looking over the middle, it is intercepted. Max Jackson saw one too many slant patterns and took it away from Brian Murphy, and that will be your ball game. And Kentez Johnson did such a great job in this game to you know, thread the needle on these tight passes, but this time throwing it just a little bit too far from Davius Reed and right into the hands of Max Jackson, who gets number 89 of his career and seals the deal here for Las Vegas, who stays in, you know, in the pack of 7-1 and one teams along with Baltimore, who just won earlier here. And so that is the interception that breaks the Predators back and their season. Charleston are officially eliminated from playoff contention. Meanwhile, for the Vegas Fury, it's over. Their three-season streak of finishing at 6-6 six and six is done. They tie a franchise-high seven-win record, and they keep pace with Arizona, who plays next right here on SFL YouTube. But for now, Fury 30, Predators 20, Las Vegas depending on what happens, could be ahead of the West Division at the end of today. You know, Las Vegas has always been that team where they're just below the cusp of greatness. They always have, you know, those up and down campaigns. We've seen seven and fives from them. We've seen six and sixes. Sometimes they only get four wins. This time, this is probably the instance where Vegas looks the most complete out of the bunch here. And it's all about perseverance against a very, very game Charleston team that had a great game plan moving forward and pushed Vegas to the limit here today despite their one and six record, one and seven record heading in. There was no quit from the Charleston defense and they gave Las Vegas a run for their money. So give all the credit to Charleston for making this a fantastic game. But Las Vegas gets one and stays on top of the, of the top four essentially. And that's really their key to stay in the top four and have that bye week heading into the playoffs. Charleston will now go on the road to face the Denver Nightwings next week while the Las Vegas Fury, they get that they get a chance to go back home and they'll play the DC Dragons the next time out in week 11. But it's the Fury with a couple of nice Scott Johnson touchdowns to really seal the deal today. Partner, your player of the game and why? And that, yeah, this one's going to be tough, but I'm going to give it to Max Jackson just because he had critical interceptions. The first one really kind of set things off in the first half for Charleston and they had to really come, come back into this game. And then he got 
he got he got the interception that basically sealed the deal for Las Vegas. So I would give it to him, though you could potentially give it to Doug Britton with his 129 on nine receptions. But for me, it's Max Jackson. I'd love to see more defensive players get the player of the game partner. I'm right there with you. And let's see who the pundits have in store for us here in just a second. Who's your player of the game? out there in chat let's hear some answers let's hear let's hear your reason why as jackson gets the final highlight of the ball game and takes away the final interception thrown by kentis johnson today as your player of the game officially will be scott johnson 16 oh. attempts 53 yards two touchdowns but it was the all-important touchdowns at the end of the ball game that really set him apart from the rest so say the pundits a special thanks once again to Jacob Clear and DJ Woods on stats and the commissioner, Cameron Irvine, back at Festival headquarters. For my partner, Brett Killian, I'm Tyler Falk. More action to come later tonight. Until then, folks, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Later.